Mercedes has started their electric evolution with their saloons. Now it's about the SUVs. This is the Mercedes EQS SUV, the top luxury EV SUV. Let's take a look here with Thomas on Autogefühl for you. In the front, we can see this star pattern grille, black panel. News is that you can see when you take a closer look here, the sensors are hidden behind the star and they have fine heating lines in them now. So it also stays active in winter times when everything is freezing all over the place that you can still have the sensor functionality. Very interesting. This alpine gray color, by the way, a very striking one, also available for the EQS and the EQE sedans, actually. The lamps start with LED and have this three dot design. Optional, the digital light, which is also built in here with more high beam functionality. What you can see here is the AMG line exterior with a different sportier graphic in the lower part. We'll soon also show the electric art line, which looks a little bit more subtle and also in a different color. As for the length, this is very interesting. Five meters, 12 or 202 inches. That means if we compare it to the EQS sedan, this one here is actually about 10 centimeters or four inches shorter in the overall length, but it has the same wheelbase and Obviously, you can see it is higher than the EQS, about 20 centimeters or eight inches higher. However, for a big SUV, it's still relatively low because of the aerodynamics. And fun fact, you can see here these optional side steps and you say like, ah, yeah, there's like a kick-ass design element. But in this case, it is more aerodynamic with the side steps because the air is being channeled from below here to the inside of the vehicle behind the rear wheel and that you know that's the way it is optimizing that wind flow very interesting and also the whole underbody is kind of covered and has also a special wind flow actually taken from formula one technology that's also pretty fancy isn't it and about the wheels because michelle is standing right there at that huge wheel 22 optional 22 inch these are the biggest ones available soon also going to show you the 21 inch wheel and here in the AMG line you can also see you have the painted wheel arches in the contrasting style the electric art would come then in the matte black scheme here there is no frunk whatsoever there's the HEPA filter underneath it when you pick that option you cannot open it only way you can open something in the front is here once again for that wiper fluid box <laughs> Always a nice feature to show. It's a little bit shorter here in that um, SUV version, but it still gets the EQS badge. So you will soon have to say EQS and for the sedan and EQS SUV, then here for that SUV style. Also available with a night package that you have the black mirror caps and also here the black frames around the window. Yeah, once again, the side profile here with some strong hip areas, but once again, also a little bit lower. I would like to know from you, what do you think about the design? Technology-wise, rear axle steering is available either 4.5 degrees in the opposite direction or optional, optional 10 degrees, the rear, uh, the rear axle steers in the opposite direction. This massively reduces the turning circle and also gives you more agility. It is actually hardware-wise in the vehicle as soon as you go for the rear axle steering, just this 10 degrees unleashing is kind of like a software thing only and um, yeah something that is not good as for development in the automotive industry that there are these you know ha you get something but then you have to pay for it by software to release it mm, i'm not a fan of that from a customer perspective here now the rear of the eqs suv this one reminds us also of the eqe or eqs saloons and there will be also a eqe suv soon to come by the way so hit subscribe and activate notification bell not to miss any of the car news here on our channel then also with this you know curling led strip lower part and contrasting here also in the amg line rather clean design overall i think this might work because it of course has this typical suv hatch soon to more to the interior Air suspension is standard for all EQS SUV models and also 108 kilowatt hours net, the battery capacity. That is the same we have in the big one in the EQS sedan, actually. Well, about the range, we cannot say something concise yet. It's, of course, a little bit less aerodynamic than the sedan, but you will more or less end up with about 400 kilometers or 250 miles range in winter time. And in summertime, some 500 kilometers plus 300 miles plus, of course, 
we will keep you updated with that as soon as we can drive this one. And as for recharging, 11 kilowatt, optional 22 kilowatt AC or around 10 kilowatt AC in the US because of that grid restriction and DC 200 kilowatt. And then you will have some 32 minutes from 10 to 80% state of charge if you have actually preconditioned the battery so you need to have some speed on the motorway should be warm enough then it also works with the fastest charging time you can get rear wheel drive or all wheel drive the 450 plus model is rear wheel drive with the best range that's why it gets this plus then the 450 model already has all wheel drive one electric motor in the rear one in the front but not the highest horsepower tune and the 580 model then all-wheel drive plus the highest horsepower tune so far unless there might be some AMG, AMG versions to come of course we'll keep you updated with that and with the acceleration figures also soon when we drive that one and here we have a different color for you in diamond white and this is also the electric art line on the exterior whereas we had the AMG on the other one you can see here the lower graphic here this is different looks a little bit more elegant than in this case by the way you can also freely combine the different lines so you can also for example go for AMG line on the exterior and on the interior then not for the AMG line so this is actually freely combinable you can see here we also have different wheels on this one these here are the 21 inch wheels with this multi-star pattern looks also very interesting and once again also with aero dynamic focus so what do you think here in white i think once again it stresses kind of like it's it is higher than the eqs yes but it actually looks quite low for an suv overall especially also in that white color doesn't it car key very good quality i like that one and then you can open or close here of course or then use the keyless entry you can press here in this area then that they open and this area to close you see that close but the opening area sometimes yeah now it works but not like 100 percent really cool they're illuminated this is a very nice detail and also with the mercedes-benz writing right here what about the door closing sound that sounds really cool wow amazing and let's see you can also get the other option here a soft close then inside of the doors that's me you know just the lights that we don't have this beeping sound here then this neotex material so it's kind of like a neoprene like style a mix of microfiber and leatherette and here also in the brown color you can get different color choices but here it fits actually these wood panels which have a star pattern in there it's like a five level uh, procedure to do that so really complicated nice nicely done however what is a little bit you know of a let's say negative evolution here these seat controls they don't give you feedback anymore they do control the seats but they do not move and the funny thing is they are more expensive to produce than the ones we have before but still they have let's say less haptic feedback hmm. also here this is one button for everything for the seat heating and also for the memory control i think this is not a good um, evolution in this case great the burmester sound system with an awesome sound there will also be now a dolby atmos function the for the, for the first time in this vehicle which is give, giving you an even more in-depth sound then seats here this will be different than in the saloon because you have a higher seating position they will also be available in full article leather red and bright black and also in a gray styling this one here however the animal skin equipment steering wheel also indicates that it's the electric art here with that slot design i said slot yes <laughs> here and also with hashtag capacitive bs buttons left and also right this is for the cruise control here you can swipe or click but then you see it's one button and also on the right side for the volume for example and also check this actually with mercedes and they also said this here is actually more expensive to produce than real buttons and then i ask myself if this solution is more expensive but harder to use why would you go for this one well the design department said that looks cooler but actually the customer department says that's not cooler to use at least what that that's what i think <laughs> tell me your comments so in the amg line you would have the steering wheel looks actually cooler than with the uh, horizontal fins but the AMG has the disadvantage that you cannot get any non-animal seating in this one then. Here, this is now the big advantage of the SUV. 
unlike the EQS Saloon, which was not ideal in the comfort. Here you have a more upright seating position. You can also put the seat a little bit higher if you like. And this is a way more relaxed seating position to me, I think. Better in the comfort. Still headroom with 1.86 meters or 6 with 1. You have enough headroom. This is also another advantage. It will be better, especially for tall people, both if you compare EQE to EQE SUV and EQS to EQS SUV. The SUV versions will offer more headroom and will be better for tall people to drive. Shifting pedals here, left or right, to change the recuperation modes. You start with a normal recuperation, which has some regenerative braking. You can make it one pedal driving but it's always getting reset after startup because of homologation issues. The manufacturer has to decide and measure the consumption and so on in one mode. On the other side, you can have less recuperation or the intelligent recuperation, which I recommend because it takes into account if a car is in front of you or not, and then adapts the recuperation. And I think it will be better if they make that one the standard mode. I talked to them about that and maybe this will be the case at some point when they also do some other changes to the vehicle. We'll see and also keep you updated. Interior overview with the optional hyper screen. Then you have this 17.7 huge middle screen and three screens overall. Screens, screens, screens. Also a passenger screen. The base setup would be more a vertical screen right here like in the S-Class or in the C-Class we know it from. And also a more separate instrument cluster which I would recommend to stay with the base setup. This looks fancier. It's also around eight or nine thousand euros extra. Nice golden color here as for the ambient lighting, but of course you can change that color here at any time. To this one for example, <laughs> why not? Um, or of course then here to uh, Thomas Blue, but I think to this interior color, I think this um, you know, golden or sand color is actually ooh, red, maybe for racing. This is actually quite fitting and um, you can of course and also change the brightness if you say this is like overkill, you can also make it a little bit more subtle overall. Middle console here once again with the nice matte wood with a star pattern. Then slide it open, have two USB-C chargers or also inductive charging pad but you have this rubber mat in there and um, I'm not sure if that's the best solution because it's kind of always flying around a little bit when you slide your smartphone in and out there. The cup holders here you press them to close but they are not really holding especially um, you know heavier bottles tight and they fly around a little bit so I think they should optimize that a little bit but when you close it it's really beautiful this is again one button also here for changing the driving modes and so on and the volume for here for the passenger then split opening once again with beautiful neotex material it really feels and looks nicely split open two more USB-C chargers digital instruments wow with a cool desert landscape look I would drive with that all day right then here these are the flickering IR lights infrared lights that they scan you that you're still alive basically in the vehicle but you only see them on camera and not in real life and you can also change the whole styling um, of that whole front system for example here to a more classic look if you like head-up display you can get and also with an augmented reality function where you have these moving arrows then inside central screen this is like the main menu has received a software update so it's faster than before and special here to the suv models off-road functionality and here you can also see you know like how the wheels are turned and so on a compass and you'll also get an off-road driving mode actually so sport comfort eco and then here off-road and in off-road driving mode the vehicle with an air suspension is being raised up and also the stability controls are being adjusted that you have a little bit more wheel spin at loose ground for example then here the gps looks really fancy you also have inside big cities the 3d animation here for example of frankfurt am main germany here's like the you know the uh, the showground tower for example and here of all the banks are being uh, in frankfurt here in germany really impressive definitely and apple carplay integration let's take a look at that so here we go looks like this and the Burmester sound system is indeed really awesome has such a great depth to it and looking forward as soon as we also can test this new Dolby Atmos uh, system then we also keep you updated with that when you are sitting on the passenger seat then also this screen gets activated and you can also enjoy the off-road information and as a passenger yeah maybe look at all the off-road stats here or maybe just look outside the window what about the rear seating area we know the same wheelbase as the EQS Saloon 
Here we also have the setup, for example, more upright seats and also these rear seat entertainment. Wow, Neotex material inside of the doors, beautiful build quality and legroom wise, no problem at all. Plenty of legroom for me and wow, this is so much more comfortable than in the EQS saloon where I have this more like falling back position. Here one way is A6 or 6 with one, also no problem as for the headroom, although it's not the tallest SUV. Beautiful microfiber ceiling we have here. And indeed, this is also a big advantage than here if you compare the electric saloon models. You just sit more upright and more comfortable, especially in the rear. You can also get here these oh, <laughs> very comfortable uh, cushions here with the microfiber surface. And you also have standard electric support here for the rear seating area. So you can make that trunk area a little bit longer and move this one here forward or then backward and also adjust here the back part of the seat. So here more upright or more laying down. So this is actually all possible. In the middle part, so we have moved everything back. We have no real middle tunnel. The middle seat, however, is not the most comfortable one because this part here is strangely rising up a little bit. You see it on camera, right? This is like, this is kind of hard. So strange middle seating position in the air. You have to move a little bit forward then that you don't sit on that hard part, but it works, but not ideal, I would say. Here, this middle part, you can fold it down. You can get this one with an additional screen where you can also browse, for example, or control some car functions. Inductive charging bits underneath here. You can also take out that screen here, by the way, like this, and then play around like that, you know, executive style for the, um, for the outer seats there. So, and then the middle console right here is here with, um, Turn on the ignition a little bit more. Let's see if it comes to life. Uh, here you are also able to adjust the temperature and the lower part. Well, one, two USB C charge and also HDMI ports and for these screens. And well, I mean, hey, have you seen that? By the way, here the panoramic roof. There's the shade at, at the moment, but I also removed the shade and then it goes in the front and also in the rear. The rear part here is of course stationary, but the front part you can also open completely. There we go. So, so this is not only a fixed panoramic roof, but really one that you can open. Hey, everyone. So uh, this is also a nice feature, definitely. And now the question is, this is here the so far available version in the seven seat already. So there will be two versions. Of Five-seater <laughs> or a seven-seater. This one is the seven-seater version. Um, so you'll be flexible with that depending on how much trunk space you want. And you have this button here at the top part and then the seat goes forward. Also the front seat goes forward. That's actually quite cool. And here we go. And then we have access to the rear seating row. But you see when the um, second seating row is all the way in the back, there is hardly any space for adults. There are no isofix for the rear. So I would say this is more like, you know, for middle-aged kids, if they're not that small that they still need extended child seats, but maybe they're a little bit not, not that tall, maybe something in between. Um, I can get inside, of course, but it is kind of tricky. I can move the um, other seating bench a little bit more forward that I could still sit there. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, I could squeeze myself in here, but you see, it doesn't really work as for my legs. Headroom wise, so there's nothing for, for tall adults here in the rear. Um, yeah, but at least maybe you might want to have that option. I would probably pick it as a five seater and then uh, profit from more um, volume in the trunk. Speaking about that, let's take a look. Now let's open that trunk. 645 up to 2100 liters in the maximum five seater setup. Here in the seven seater setup, you lose 80 liters then because um, even when they fall down, this is like, you know, the last step just. Here you can also store, for example, the last cover. This is possible. And then these here are actually going to have this button here, manual for the head restraint. And like this here then to put them down manually like this. So, and then the normal length, and this is the same, of course, for the five and seven seater here, um, is about one meters and 10 or 43 inches. And the width, let's see if that is like the standard measurement. Yeah, this is a good meter of 40 inches. And the overall height for this trunk, let's take a look here, 
about 75 centimeters or 30 inches. And now you have on the right side these two buttons for left and right. And then you have this electric folding function for the second seating row. And then we actually have good space there to the very front. And here we go. And this is an easy two meters or 78 inches. That's of course very well usable. And for folding them up again, once again, just the electric control. This is an actual easy solution. So very flexible and of course more flexible than you are with the saloons. These one there, you have to fold them up manually then once again. If you want to compare the EQS sedan, we have a big review of that one here. And of course the main competitor of that one is the BMW iX. Check out the review here.